So today we'll be going through book one of Virgil's Aeneid, lines 39 to 49. To first provide a little context for this passage, up until now Virgil has been detailing the sources of Juno's hatred for Aeneas and the Trojans, and her attempts to drive them away from her beloved city of Carthage. In the last line, we just heard the first words spoken in the Aeneid, which come from Juno, as she angrily talks to herself. These next lines make up the bulk of that soliloquy, and she discusses her anger over the fact that she can't just destroy Aeneas like Athena had done previously with Ajax. Uh, the first sentence is pretty straightforward in terms of structure. It translates very literally as, indeed, I am forbidden by the fates. Uh, and this is actually a direct reference to the last line where she was asking somewhat rhetoric rhetorically if she would be able to keep Aeneas away from Italy. So in response to that question, we have that the fates are forbidding her from keeping the Trojans at bay. And then she immediately jumps to the story of Athena, who had a similar hostility with a mortal from the Trojan War, although her hatred was for Ajax, a Greek, uh, rather than a Trojan. So as Juno recalls the story, she says, was not Pallas, uh, Pallas just being another common name for Athena or Minerva, and that was not coming from this ne on the end of Pallas, which sets up a yes or no question. So was not Pallas able to burn the fleet of the Argives, uh, which are the Greeks, and we can hear, see here that that um ending is the syncopated form of Argivorum, and to drown them in the sea, on account of the crime and madness of one Ajax of Oileus. Um, and here the text is just rewritten so that it's a little closer to the English word order. So we have, indeed I am forbidden by the fates, was not Pallas able to burn the fleet of the Argives and to drown them in the sea on account of the crime and madness of one Ajax of Oileus. So there's just a little more backstory to the story of Ajax and Athena. Um, during the taking of Troy at the end of the war, Ajax went into the temple of Athena where Cassandra, who was a daughter of Priam, was holding onto a statue of Athena um, as a suppliant praying for protection. The stories differ slightly in that Ajax either dragged her violently from the statue or may have even raped her in the temple. Uh, either way, these are both terrible offenses against the gods, and Athena, in her rage, eventually gets her revenge on him, which we will see in the next lines. Um, so we start here, she, which is Athena or Minerva again, having thrown, uh, which is a PPP, the swift fire of Jove, or of Jupiter, and that uh, swift fire refers to his lightning bolts, which actually, of all the gods, only Minerva and Jupiter have the power to use, since Minerva sprung directly from Jupiter's head. So, having thrown Jupiter's lightning uh, from the clouds, she both scattered the ships and overturned the sea with wind, or winds. And we have to remember here to translate that que, que as both and. So, with a storm, uh, she snatched him up. And that ilum refers back to Ajax, um, and this next clause as well is modifying Ajax. So she snatched him up, breathing fire from his pierced chest. Um, we know that expirantem is a PAP from that NT there, and uh, impaled him on a sharp rock. Um, and once again, just so it's clear, she, having thrown the swift fire of Jupiter from the clouds, both scattered the ships and overturned the sea with winds, snatched him up with a storm, breathing fire from his pierced chest, and impaled him on a sharp rock. So not only does Minerva strike Ajax with lightning and destroy his entire fleet in the ocean, but she then lifts him up and impales his body on a rock just for good measure. Uh, and it's clear as Juno is talking that she's telling this tale with a kind of relish and jealousy, um, and that she wishes she could be doing this to Aeneas. And in these lex next lines we can see that she's also a bit spiteful that she hasn't been able to take out her anger on him. She says, But I, who walk around as the queen of the gods, and again that uh, diwum here is just short for diwarum, so as the queen of the gods, and as 
both the sister and wife of Jupiter. And again, that both and construction, although this time it's with et instead of que. Um, so I wage war with one with one race for so many years. And does anyone hereafter worship the divinity of Juno or a humble a humble person or a suppliant um, will a suppliant place offerings on her altar um, and this these that a and this e here is just important to note that there's a tense change um, adorat is present indicative and imponet is future indicative so just be conscious of that um, and here are those final lines, just once again, nice and tidied. But I, who walk around as the queen of the gods, and both the sister and wife of Jupiter, wage war with one race for so many years. And does anyone hereafter worship the divinity of Juno, or will a suppliant place offerings on her altar? Um, and that is it for lines 39 to 49. And in the next passage, we'll start to see how Juno takes some action on her anger and frustration.